Some of you might recognize the title I am using for this video. It's famous or infamous, depending on your perspective. It's an English translation of a famous aphorism from Nietzsche's Beyond Good and Evil, specifically aphorism 146. He has a long chain of these in that particular work. And it's not necessarily the best translation. The original German, for those who are interested, goes like this. Wer mit Ungeheuern kämpft, mag zusehen, dass er nicht dabei zum Ungeheuer wird. Und wenn du lange in einen Abgrund blickst, blickt der Abgrund auch in dich hinein. And the conventional translation is, of course, he who fights with monsters might take care, lest he thereby become a monster. And when you gaze long into an abyss, the abyss also gazes into you. And I think a more poetic rendition that's often given as well, and a more fluid one would be, battle not with monsters, lest ye become a monster. For if you gaze into the abyss, the abyss gazes back into you. And I don't want to get into the nitty-gritty of translation, what the words mean, so much as the essential message that's being put forth in this aphorism. Because I think it's important, both for individuals and for greater society. The point that Nietzsche is trying to make with this aphorism is that if you throw yourself into the maw of the beast, you might become that beast. A more modern interpretation might be if you continually deal with something, say a political faction, or a way of thinking, you might adopt that way of thinking. And that adoption may come at the cost of a compromise of your own principles, effectively the relinquishment of your principles. And I think this is highly relevant today, because we live in an era, given the internet, of heavy mudslinging and a general unwillingness to offer charity and goodwill to the other person, the other guy, one's quote-unquote opponent. And increasingly I've seen a tendency all on its own to look to justify any tactic and any means of engagement in order to perpetuate one's existence and I think this can come at a terrible cost. I think that this aphorism is at least in part correct. Now I want to mention a concrete example of this I've observed on YouTube without attacking the person in question, because I'm not interested in attacking people, I'm offering criticism of this approach of this worldview. Now there's a guy named Frame Game Radio who is quite prominent these days. He has given some very nice and detailed lectures, if you wish to call them such, on the nature of the so-called diversity industry, this machine in the United States that is always looking to have the appropriate number of whatever minority they see fit to have, and just how much money is involved in the degree and level of corruption. And I think for that, he's to be lauded because he's certainly offering information on subjects that are rarely touched upon and, and subjects that people just don't have a lot of knowledge of. But at times he'll take a turn in a certain direction that I don't see as necessarily uh, beneficial. And I'm not in that circle of people. I mean, for better or worse, Frame Game is outright, but I'm aware of him. And his motto, it seems, is to say to defeat the diversity industry, to defeat the people who employ certain tactics, people must adopt similar tactics. And oftentimes he will offer the suggestion that one adopt and, and follow tactics that were perpetuated and propagated by one Saul Alinsky. Now, for those of you who don't know, Saul Alinsky was a radical. In fact, he <laughs> wrote a rather famous book in the early 70s, Rules for Radicals. And he's a community organizer and far, far, far left. Although, to my knowledge, he never uh, declared himself to be an outright anything specifically. He was just far left and radical. And he would oftentimes go on about the need to corrupt oneself in order to achieve certain goals, to renounce principles. Effectively, the ends justify the means. And I often see echoes of that when frame game radio is speaking on this matter because he appears to be convinced that 
the only way to offer opposition to what can obviously be considered a highly corrupt and venal approach to things is to adopt those tactics yourself. And I think this is where the aphorism, wer mit ungeheuern kämpft, he who fights with monsters, really comes into play. Because I worry, not specifically about the frame game issue, I'm not involved in the alt-right, I'm not part of that circle. It's more about a general concern that increasingly we've become willing, and maybe this has always been the case, otherwise an aphorism would not have been written in the 19th century, but I suppose it's much more apparent these days because of the internet, because everyone is wired into each other and connected to each other, that principles don't really matter much anymore. It's just getting the job done. In a sense, you can see this reflected in mass marketing and manufacturing. I think throughout the years I must have mentioned on occasion my father's old army duffel bag, which had seen service not just in the military, but uh, service in a civil context, and then years later in my own life after the thing had been, well, easily 50 years old. And I think it tells a lot about our attitude towards things as a rule that we are increasingly in our current society willing to forego principles in order to simply put things out, in order to simply produce, in order to simply achieve goals. In the political realm, there are real consequences to this. So for example, let's say through some strange mechanism that I cannot at the current moment understand, that there were people out there who were able to achieve more right-aligned goals, who were able to achieve things that at the moment seem mostly relevant and germane to the internet out in real life, and the way they did it would be to adopt the Alinskyite radical tactics, which were heavily dishonest and involved a lot of subterfuge and indeed sabotage at times, manipulation, etc., etc. Well, let's say this happened. Let's say over time, years or decades, this particular countergroup achieved prominence. Well, they would have achieved prominence in this context using the same tactics that the current group in power or groups in power used and utilized to achieve power. And the question then that is begotten of this theoretical mess of politics is, would they be significantly different in shape and form from the current iteration of majority politics. Now I would say likely not. Whatever principles somebody platforms on, and let's say for the sake of argument that Saul Alinsky was fighting for the underdog, that he was trying to achieve greater equity for marginalized groups such as Native Americans or black people or whatever at the time, that whatever principles he originally may have had, noble or ignoble, it doesn't really matter in this context, he forfeited those principles by engaging in highly underhanded means of manipulation, rhetoric, and outright political tactics. Some people might say, well, that's fine as long as you get the job done, whatever gets the job done. But Again, by way of analogy, if you look at the manufacturing world, the degree of slipshottedness that has entered into manufacturing, say, a pair of jeans, where it has the half-life of a paper cup in some cases, offers us a bit of a mirror into what you end up with in the political realm or even the philosophical realm when you renounce and relinquish your principles for the sake of expediency in the hope of expediting whatever plan you have in the fastest and most efficient way possible. The end result of this in the political and philosophical realm, once again by way of analogy, you have the fragility and half-life time of a paper cup and a pair of jeans, or dungarees as they used to be called back in the day, products that used to last years if not decades, is that you have given up your principles and now you have no principles. You have nothing left. You become the monster as Nietzsche had somewhat prophesized in that aphorism, that you sought to fight. You become that beast because you had gazed far too long into the abyss and 
your own vision of what you wanted to achieve had become incongruent with the principles that at one point in time had set you afoot the path you chose to pursue. And you become that indistinguishable monster or dweller in the abyss that that aphorism outlines for us. And then, in the end, one can really call into question what the end product might be. It will not be that thing which originally sought after by agitators and people looking to produce political or philosophical change in the mainstream. It will not be that thing. It will be something very, very similar to what we have now. I do not think it will be identical, obviously, but there's an even finer point to be made here. There is the point of no return. There's the idea of once you squeeze the toothpaste out of the toothpaste tube, it is very difficult, if not impossible, to get it back into the tube. And the same, I think, could be applied to these more abstract political and philosophical principles that if you attempt to adopt certain tactics and methods that at some point in time had been anathema to you, and in this process becoming that which you formerly had despised, and at the same time losing track of your own ability to identify that metamorphosis in you, then it's effectively a case of the toothpaste being out of the tube. It is very difficult to return to a former set of principles once these principles are gone. And I think we have good evidence for this in terms of what happened to what can be only regarded as the majority left-leaning politics of the mainstream, which have increasingly gone further and further and further left. To say they have principles and how they engage with people, well, they don't really. They have an agenda, they have a dogma, and they're willing to do anything and say anything to achieve it. And I don't think there are very many people, with a few exceptions, that are willing to offer some countervailing points within those circles, and more importantly, people who are looking to reform that. You have the odd, say, 90s liberals, such as Sam Harris or whatever, but he is regarded as being on the right by the left, which just goes to show how far they have gone. I think the same thing could happen with the right. I think the same thing could happen with the quote-unquote alt-right. I think it could happen with any political manifestation we observe these days. And then more broadly, globally speaking, one could worry about China. Now, I've had a gentleman named Kai Chang on before on the channel to talk about some of this, the details. But what do you do? And this is really, really a case of being caught between a rock and a hard place. When China is completely unprincipled in its approach to things, completely focused on quote-unquote efficiency, and the West needs to cling to certain principles because if it does not, it will forfeit them naturally over time for all the reasons I've explained in this video hitherto, what do you do? That's a serious political, philosophical, and moral question. I see a real challenge to that uh, going forward in the future. So this doesn't really just apply to frame gaming, one example, or really any individual in particular. I'm talking about people looking to fight monsters of a sort and becoming the monsters themselves in the type of tactics, methods, and underhandedness they're willing to employ in order to achieve goals. This applies to governments, it applies to populations, it applies to individuals, it applies to organizations across the board. It's something I think we need to bear in mind because it's obvious there isn't much redeeming in the left anymore and I think it's because it's too far gone. Whatever monsters they sought, and I'm not necessarily saying they were monsters per se, but in their own eyes they were monsters, they became as bad, if not worse, than the monsters they sought to combat. And that is something we all need to consider, both as individuals and our personal lives, because ultimately if we have no principles, we have no code of conduct by which we can live. That, at the very least, makes life very, very difficult to live, if not impossible. And more broadly for society, we're increasingly in a society where anything goes, the lack of principles and the lack of reinforcement of those principles is leading us into an abyss. And increasingly, it's worse than what Nietzsche suggests in the aphorism. It's not fighting or combating the abyss that is creating monsters of a sort. It's merely dwelling in an abyss without even being cognizant of that inhabitation. And that's something that really has me worried overall, because it's less about increasingly, because increasingly it's less about fighting monsters in the abyss, 
than simply being a denizen of this modern hell. Anyway, I wanted to outline some of these things in this video. Again, there was no personal attack intended or anything like that. I'm simply offering some criticism of the idea that one must adopt the principles of the enemy in order to achieve victory. And I would offer in the final analysis that even if that's the case, the victory will become hollow because you will no longer be able to maintain the principles that originally drove you to pursue that fight. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, and in as much as my health holds up, there will be more content to care. Bye-bye. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.